I'm blushing a bit, I'm so excited. We're now joined by astronaut Tim Peake. <sighs> Hello, Tim. Um, I'm trying Good not morning. to blush. Great, this, great to speak to you today. I know, this is so cool. I just okay, Tim's new docuseries, uh, Secrets of Our Universe, starts on Channel 5 on Tuesday. Tim, uh, the show took you all over the world. Now, it's difficult to know where to begin, but my question, I suspect it's everybody's, what's the most incredible thing that you saw? Uh, it was brilliant, Rob. It was such a, a sort of unique experience to go and speak to so many experts around the world. Um, but I have to say, I think Australia probably was my my most uh, exciting, most fun trip. We went to the Western Outback somewhere I've never been before. Looks amazing from space, all the beautiful orange colours of the, of the desert. Um, and we got to see the total solar eclipse as well out there, as well as the dark skies. And you look up from the dark skies of Australia and the Milky Way is just straight above you. It's absolutely it's, magnificent. It's so hard to imagine, but we don't actually need to because I think we've got a clip from the show. Let's just have a look. We've got about four minutes to go now. There's just a tiny sliver of the sun left. It's like somebody is just turning the dimmer switch down on the lights. And then suddenly, up in space, these heavenly bodies align perfectly. That is incredible. The moon has completely covered the sun. We now have 62 seconds where there is darkness. You know, there's something that really gifts you a moment of bewildered awe. There's even something sort of spiritual, I would say, uh, looking at that, inviting the young to be inspired to, to look up into um, the heavens, I have to say. Um, you know, and it asks such well, complete, I, I have to say, Rob, but that for me, I did not expect that eclipse to have such an immense impact. Um, when the birds land and all the wildlife goes quiet, the hairs stand up on the back of your neck. Um, and it was it really surprised me what a powerful experience witnessing that eclipse was. I, I can see now why people spend their their lives chasing eclipses. So it moves you even now. What does it do to you? You've seen, you know, the Earth from um, outer space that moment. What does it feel like to, to, to have that moment, to, to see it in the way that so few people, you're only the second uh, a British person after Helen Sharma to do that? It's, it's a very special thing. It's a huge privilege to go to space. But it really, when you see Earth in the daytime against this black backdrop, it's amazing. It surprises you how deep and black space is. It's the blackest black you'll ever see. And, and it kind of puts it into perspective of, of just what Earth is, this incredible sanctuary in, in this blackness where you know we can survive. It's a, it's a very rare planet. Um, at the moment, we think it's the only planet where there's life. Uh, it's probably not. But uh, you, you look back at Earth, you think, wow, that's it. That's home. You know, that's, that's what we need to protect. Um, let, let me ask you about that. I mean, there have been some Senate hearings and now questions about UFOs. And you ask in the most scientific way possible um, whether or not there might be life um, on other planets. Um, what do you reckon? I think statistically, when you look out there and part of the show goes and, and speaks to planet hunters uh, in, in observatories, uh, and we found over 5,000 planets so far just in our local neighbourhood that are orbiting stars where there could be you know, habitable water on these planets. We know the building blocks of life are just in our own solar system. They're everywhere. We're capturing them on the space station, um, carbon um, uh, compounds, for example. And we know that life happened on Earth pretty quickly, about a billion years after the conditions were suitable. Uh, I think the universe is teeming with life. A lot of it will be simple, uh, single-celled organisms, bacteria, but I think there will also be a huge amount of, of intelligent life out there. Really? The problem is, of course, the times and the distances involved. The universe is just vast. So will we ever make that first contact? So times and distance, of course, is the, the big problem, um, unless we can break uh, Einstein's uh, laws of physics to get there. But assuming uh, we could, do you think there's a possibility of space travel within our lifetime? I mean, Nina's going to live forever. She's got a NASA mug. Yeah, um, I have, actually, yeah. She's there in honour of you. Do you think... I would get to space as, as a NASA mug. Do, do you think uh, uh, Nina, Fantastic. in her lifetime, might be able to go and I visit Mars? Well, it's pushing it a bit. 
<laughs> That's great to see. I, I, well, I certainly think that we're going to see humans walking on Mars by the late 2030s. That's completely achievable. It's what we're working towards. Uh, we're going to see humans on the surface of the moon again in just the next three to five years. How exciting for all those generations that didn't see the last human leave the moon in 72. You know, we can see that again. Um, so, yes, I, I think that what we're doing is we're really moving forward very rapidly at the moment in space exploration. And it's bringing the cost of space down, and that's opening up the market to so many more businesses, uh, research establishments, and in the future, mm -hmm. tourists as well. So why not? Well, can I ask you about it? Because at the moment, you know, if you want to go into space, it's really the kind of plaything of billionaire tourists who have had the opportunity uh, to do this. And it does cost a lot of money. We saw um, India's um, space program get to the dark side uh, of the moon you know, which isn't David Bowie, it costs a huge amount of money. Um, and I guess I'm wondering with the cost of living and the current economic climate, whether or not you think this is something that Britain should be investing in. You know, we're no longer part of a European partnership in the same way as we were, are we? So I, I think you need to look at the space in, in terms of what part of the industry is doing what. I think that space should be used for scientific purposes, for the benefit of everybody back down here on planet Earth. That's exactly what we do on board the International Space Station, uh, doing phenomenal amounts of research into things like vaccines for viruses, drugs for diseases like motor neurone, Parkinson's, Huntington's, <clears throat> creating new metal alloys that will help make our engines lighter and more efficient, uh, cleaner back here on Earth, all those kind of things. So. Some of the commercial tourism uh, that we're seeing isn't uh, really doing it for scientific purposes. Um, but fast forward 100 years, and that could turn into some sort of suborbital transportation system that will make uh, travel around the planet much more efficient. So they are paving the way in terms of new technology. Um, and in terms of the, the, the cost, it's coming down so rapidly. It used to be $57,000 a kilogram on the space shuttle. And now with Elon Musk's new Starship rocket, that could yeah. be as low as $100 per kilogram. And that opens up so many more opportunities in the space environment. And suddenly things like solar farms in space, right. beaming down clean, limitless energy from the sun become a reality. So you say on balance, it's something that uh, England or the UK um, or wherever we are in 2035 uh, should be investing in, right? Oh, completely. Um, the space economy is booming. We would be absolutely foolish not to be investing and involved. I mean, at the moment, it employs uh, nearly 50,000 people in the UK. It's worth about 17 and a half billion to our economy. Well, and we get a 10 to I, 1 I have return. to ask you, uh, sorry, Major Tim, because I can't hear you through our, our technology. It's like when uh, I was watching you do that marathon in space. But I have to ask, you know, Larry and Leela or Storm, would, would, would you go into space? Um, I, but I think I'm a bit, I'm, you know, a bit beyond it now. But I just wanted to say quickly to Tim that yeah. I, I, I love the first part of of the series, and um, it, you know, a lot of space stuff kind of goes over my head. People start talking about string theory, but yours was 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 just wonderful. I, I could understand exactly what you were talking about. And by the way, I hope I'm not buttering you up too much. Yeah. You are a natural presenter. Yeah. You know, so that's, <laughs> no, it's because it. Well, and 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 you and you know, Tim makes a very good case, but. I have to say, I have a very strong feeling that this, a lot of this is about we're going to mess up our own planet and then go and find another one. And that's a real concern for me that there's all this, you know, it's big, it's boys and big toys, isn't it? Let's, I mean, when India put a rocket, a rocket into space, it was like, look how great we are. We're a first you know, rank nation. Now, it's all about power and influence and being seen to be important. And well, Laura, we're going I, to I talk about exploring because uh, Tim tells us um, that it's about teaching, it's about finding solutions in space for our own planet. And, and, and he's also, also mentioned also business in, opportunities, which what kind of what kind of business opportunities? Also encouraging young people, which strikes me as your fundamental mission should you choose to accept it is that right or is or is Lowry right and uh, should we be more cynical no, I mean, absolutely when we go into to space it's all about and the one overriding uh, emotion is just how incredible planet earth is how precious and unique it is in our solar system um trying to terraform mars it is way beyond what we're going to be capable of in the next, you know, four, five hundred, maybe a thousand years. <clears throat> so Earth is it. Earth is home and we need to look after it. And if we're careful, Earth will protect us for another billion years if we're around. So, um, you know, absolutely, that is the priority is, is looking after our own planet. 
And space is trying to do that. More than 50% of all of our climate data comes from satellites. We're pushing the boundaries of solar technology, investigating things like fusion, um, helping to make these renewable energies. I'm going to have to stop this debate. You, you, uh, let me tell you, watch the programme um, and find out and come to your own conclusions. I have to say it is profoundly inspirational, not least um, getting young people looking up into the heavens and thinking, if you're good at maths, if you can, above all else, dream, then anything's possible. And that strikes me as the underlying heart of this programme. So Thanks thank you. Um, astronaut Tim Peake. I got to speak to an astronaut this morning. I'm so delighted. Secrets of the Universe with Tim Peake continues on Tuesdays at 9pm on Channel 4.